I recently photographed the beach huts at Southwold, and from those shots, this is the one that I want to use. The only problem is that I want the red stripes on the hut in the center to be blue. This is an ideal job for the Affinity Photo Color Replacement Brush. You'll find the brush in the tools palette over on the left of the screen. It's grouped with the other tools like the regular paintbrush, so you may find one of those is visible instead. If it is, click the small grey triangle to the bottom right of the icon. This displays the other tools in the group, allowing you to select the colour replacement brush. After selecting the brush, we need to choose the new colour to replace the red. This should be a similar colour to the other beach huts on either side. The way to do this is by double clicking the colour swatch at the bottom of the tools palette. This opens the colour picker dialog where we can then choose a new colour to use. I'll create this from the colour of the beach hut on the right. All I need to do is click the sampling tool with my mouse. Then, whilst holding down the mouse button, drag it over the colour that I want to sample. You can see that this displays a magnified area over the sample point. When I release the mouse button, the sample colour appears next to the eyedropper icon in the dialog. If I then click that, it sets the colour of the dialog. Now I'm using the hue setting for the dialog rather than one of the other options because it makes the next step easier. I can now click and drag the colour point to choose a new colour which has the same hue component as the sample. Move it up or down to change the lightness of the colour or left and right to change the saturation. With the new colour selected, let's duplicate the background image layer just in case something goes wrong. The colour replacement brush is a destructive edit, so it's going to change the pixels of the image. By working on a copy layer, we still have the original if we need to start again. We can copy the layer by right-clicking it in the Layer Studio panel and then choosing the duplicate option. Alternatively, you can press Command and J on a Mac or Control and J on a Windows PC. Now we're ready to paint over the red stripes of the beach hut. To do this, position the centre of the brush over the red panel. We then see a preview of how it'll look if we apply the brush. This lasts a couple of seconds and then vanishes unless we keep moving the brush. Now click once and hold down the mouse button. As we then move the brush along the red stripe, it changes to the new colour. What's happening is that when I clicked, Affinity Photo sampled the colour of the image at the centre of the brush. It then identifies any pixels with a similar colour that fall inside the brush circumference and it changes those to the new colour. What's controlling whether a pixel is deemed to be the same colour or not is the tolerance slider in the toolbar. The smaller the tolerance, the closer the colour of the pixels need to be to be a match. If we use a big number, then the colour doesn't need to be as close. But there's something else that's happening here and that I want you to be aware of. When I click on one of the red panels and paint over it, only that stripe is changed. It doesn't seem to matter that my brush covers other red panels. The reason is that I have the contiguous option ticked in the toolbar. Let's undo the last change now by pressing Command and Z or Control and Z on a Windows PC. I can then repaint the area, but without the contiguous option ticked. Notice this time that it's changing the other red stripes as well. Because the stripe I've been painting over was surrounded by white, the contiguous option was restricting the colour change to that stripe. You can probably see this more clearly if I paint around the area of the window shutter. When the contiguous option is off, it changes the colour of the shutter. Let's undo that now and repeat it with the contiguous option on. This time it ignores the window because it's surrounded by white. It's only if I move the centre of my brush over the window that its colour changes. Now we need to look closely at the results because there's something else that I want you to notice. The brush hasn't replaced all the areas of red and has left a small strip below the window. That's because this area isn't a close enough colour match to the area where I first clicked. One way to prevent this from happening is to increase the tolerance slider. Let's undo the change and repeat it, but using a 30% tolerance. Whilst this seems to fix the problem, it can also create others. For example, notice that even though I have a contiguous option ticked, the brush now paints over the window. That's because it's detecting similar pixels in the white surround that make it think the area is contiguous. 
We can also see that it paints over the concrete wall to change the red pixels there. Let's undo that now and look at what happens when we reduce the tolerance to 5%. This time the brush doesn't recolor all the red areas. This is one reason why you should spend a little bit of time checking the tolerance before painting. All you need to do is move the brush over the area and you can check the preview. Now there's one final important point you need to know. The brush only replaces colours with a colour of a similar intensity. You may have noticed that whilst I've been painting, the white boards haven't been affected. That's partly because I sent the sample colour to red when I first clicked. But watch what happens if I start sampling one of the white boards. It still doesn't change the colour. That's because white doesn't have a colour to replace. Now compare this to the sky, which has a slight blue tint. When I paint over that, you can see that it's replaced by a pale blue colour with a similar intensity. This means that you can't use this technique to change the colour of anything that's black, white or grey. It only works with colour. Now there is one further feature of the brush that we haven't used, which is the continuous sampling. To learn how that works and how it can help you achieve better results, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you'll find lots more tutorials on my website. I'll see you soon.